Hi everybody. One of the most popular articles on the website is around how to access your webcam in HTML. So in this video, let's get right down to it and start looking at how we can use vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to get our webcam data to display fully within our browser window. Let's get started. Now, historically, accessing your webcam was not possible using just web technologies. You needed to use something pardon profanity, a plugin. That means that you typically had to rely on a plugin like Flash or Silverlight to make all of the magic of getting your webcam data from an external device to display somewhere within your screen and then more specifically within your browser window. Those times have changed as our browsers became to gain more capabilities and also as they began to block access to plugins and also our mobile devices needed to be able to kind of partake in this whole media, video and audio kind of craze that's currently going around, the native web frameworks, native web APIs and HTML, CSS and JavaScript kind of gained the capabilities of being able to display webcam data in it. And there are two pieces that are critical for making this work. One is the video element. The other one is the get user media API. Now the video element is an HTML element and its main job is to take the video stream from our webcam and actually display it on screen. It's appropriately named for what it does, which is always a good thing when it comes to figuring out what something is actually about to do. The bigger part of our capabilities is provided by the Get User Media API. It's a JavaScript API that does three things. The first thing it does is it allows us to specify whether we want to get video data from our webcam audio data from microphone or webcam, or both. Many webcams today support both audio and video, so you can kind of choose which part you want to take advantage of, or if you want to take advantage of both, you can do so, and the Get User Media API makes it very easy to do. Now, when a visitor accesses your content that's using Get User Media API, they have the option of either allowing access to their webcam or not allowing it. This is for a variety of privacy reasons. And so the Get User Media API has a big permissions capability built into it. So if the user says, yep, please access the webcam, there is a success function that gets called that we need to put all the logic we want inside it to make a webcam do what it does. And likewise, if a user says, nope, do not give me access to the webcam, in those cases, there's an error function that we specify, which the Get User Media API provides, that we can then go in and make some of our changes too. And so with that, I'm going to go jump into code editor and we're going to go ahead and build from scratch a very simple example that gets data from our webcam and displays it on screen. So let me go ahead and go into my code editor, which should be ah, VS Code, which is right here. And so what I have here is I have my window tiled, left half is VS Code, right hand side is the page in the browser that I want to display. Right now, our page is completely empty. So let me go ahead and just you know use the shortcut, the exclamation mark to get the boilerplate for application up and running. So I'm gonna call this display webcam stream. Let me save it. And I'm going to just refresh the page to just make sure that the page I'm currently displaying here in my code editor is the same one displayed on the right hand side. And yep, you cannot see the title, it says display webcam stream. Okay, so let's start with the HTML. So the HTML I kind of want is going to be pretty straightforward. It's going to be a div element with an ID of container. And inside of it will be our video element. The element is going to be responsible for taking the data from web webcam and displaying it. So video, I'm going to set the autoplay attribute to true, which means that I don't want to have the user to, have to do anything extra to get the webcam to display. And I'm going to give the ID value of video element. OK, so here's a video element and inside our container element. Great, so if I refresh the page right now, you won't really see much. And that's because everything I've added right now is pretty invisible. It's not actually have any visuals that makes it do something. Let me go ahead and add a heading one tag. Heading one, display webcam stream. And let's refresh the page now. You know, see display webcam stream displayed. Let me zoom in a bit so I can just see this all more clearly. And let's go ahead and add some styles just so that we don't aren't working with a completely blank slate here. So the first thing I want to style is my heading element. Let's give it a font family of sans serif. Pretty nice chill color. And let's give it a color of, what color shall we give it? Um, let's give it blue. I, I like these like autocomplete items here because some of them are pretty interesting. I'll give it a value of, let's go with green. I'm probably gonna regret it, but we'll stay with that for now. Actually, let's make it a classy dark gray. 
Okay, perfect. And next, let me do the body element. Let me give it a margin value of 50 pixels, just so that it's not completely flushed against the screen. Okay, and now let's go ahead and style our container element, the one that is housing our video. Let me give it a width of 500 pixels, height of 375 pixels, and a background color that is going to be a dark gray. Uh, you can see a theme here with the gray colors going. And that's a little bit on the large side, that's because I have it zoomed in. Let me zoom out, we're good here. Next one, let's go ahead and style our video element. And our video element is going to be, actually, what have I just done here? Ah, I made a mistake, you know, dangerous have live coding. It's not the container that I just styled, I styled our video element. So let me go back and just replace our container style to video element. And let me go ahead and now specify the correct value for container, which is margin zero pixels auto, keeping it centered on screen. I could have used grid or flex box, but for what we're trying to do here, not necessary. Two single pixels, and then give it a border of 10 pixels, dark gray color, and solid. Okay, now we have the appropriate style set. And now you can see a gray box with a dark gray border. You can imagine that inside this gray box is where webcam content will ultimately display. All right, so now we have the basic visuals of our application running. Now it's time to go ahead and use the Get User Media API to do the second half of the equation, which is we have the video element. We now want to populate the video element with data from our actual webcam. And so for this, I'm going to go and add a script tag here. Script and close script. Let me go ahead and make it all aligned. You know, it's, it's one of those things where you don't have to do it while you're coding it. In fact, you can actually use the format document command that VS Code provides. But I just find it therapeutic as I'm writing code to make sure everything is lined up and the spacing is right and so on. So let's go ahead and go ahead and start writing our code. So I'm going to declare a variable called video and it's going to reference our video element. So document.query selector and it's going to be video element. All right. And so now we're going to start using the Get User Media API. The first thing I'm going to do is just make sure our browser actually supports the Get User Media API, which you know today almost all browsers do. But you could be in this weird situation where some mobile device or someone's in a really really old computer, old browser, where they need to basically not have access to this. So I'm going to first check if Navigator dot Media Devices dot Get User Media. This checks for the existence of this API. And you know, if it doesn't support it else, console.log get user media not supported. Just something for us to keep in mind here, nothing too specific. And so within this, I'm gonna now add our capabilities to check and use the get user media API. The so navigator.media devices dot get user media. And now this is actually a function-based object, sorry, not a promise-based object. So I'm going to first pass in the argument video true. And notice I'm passing the argument as an object. And so we can see that get user media, video true. I'm not really worrying about audio right now, so that's partly why. And now I'm going to do the dot then function stream. And what I'm going to specify here is if this is all working out properly, video.source object equals the value of stream. And so within this promise, I'm specifying it then. And lastly, if for whatever reason this whole thing doesn't work out, then do a catch to make sure that we capture the error and say something happens to go wrong. Okay. And function, I always get the the parentheses and the quotation marks and brackets always confused. So console.log, something went wrong. Okay, so here we have checking if get user media supported. We'll assume it is. And then we do get user media, set video to true as our argument. And then we use the async then and catch for as part of the promises to make sure we have everything prepared correctly. All right, this looks to be pretty good. So let's go and refresh the page and make sure this works. So notice that when I refresh the page, the first thing that happens 
is I'm asked if this page, this page wants to use our camera, do I want to allow it? I'm going to hit allow. And once I hit allow, notice what happens. You can now see me on this part of the screen fully within my browser. And it's pretty snappy and pretty quick and it's all pretty cool. Great. So this totally works. And now we look at the code as well. You know, the, the part to really keep in mind is that there are many ways of writing the promise based syntax. I use the most verbose uh, version available. There are ways you can use both the async and await you know, keywords to simplify this. I might cover that later. Definitely look in the forums, the link in the bottom to go into more detail there. And so really that is a, a lightning fast overview of what it takes to go from having some data and that's our webcam data that gets surfaced through our browser then actually displaying it on screen using the video element. Now, this is just a surface we just scratched on what we can do here. There's a whole lot more that can be done all the way leading up to like almost your own real time video chatting application that you can build. There's an article on the website that covers that as well. So definitely go check it out. But I'm not going to keep you here for too long beyond this. There's going to be a lot more that we're going to cover in the future regarding video and audio. So consider this almost as your gateway to all the opportunities we can have in learning more about all of this. So if you have any questions about the webcam, post on the forums at forum.group.com. Now, this is one of those topics that is very, very popular. A lot of people have asked many questions on taking the basics we looked at here and extending it in various directions. So I highly recommend you go to the forums, check it out and search for this topic and look at all the commentary that has been provided so far. Of course, if you like this video, tell your friends and enemies all about it. Hit subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified of new videos that I keep recording. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter and other places where people named at Krupa might be congregating. And lastly, if you like watching videos, if you like reading content on screen, you might also enjoy reading them in paperback form or Kindle edition form. And so check out some of the books I've written that go into much greater detail on some of the topics we saw in other video form here or in other interesting topics that I might be writing about that is either seen on screen right now or hasn't even been published because by time you see this video, I might have written a few other books that might be covered. Link below. So check out my books. They also make pretty good gifts depending on what time of the year or season that you want to gift this to somebody. And with that, I will see you all next time.